The final report into alleged bullying by the Labor MP Mecca Faitari has been publicly released. Ms Faitari was sacked as Minister of Customs and from her four other associate ministries for her conduct towards a staffer at an event in Gisborne in August. The report writer, lawyer David Patton, says the explanation provided by the staffer is more probable than the minister's version of the events. Our political reporter Gia Garrick has read the documents and spoke to me from our parliamentary office. She says the report found Ms Faitari did not pull or drag the staffer from the foyer, but she did grab her by the arm and raise her voice. Essentially what the report has found is that uh, Mika Faitari's report is less probable than the report of the staffer who she uh, allegedly assaulted. So the, we're talking about a grab to the arm from behind. That's what the report has found, that Mika Faitari walked up, grabbed her employee from behind and left bruising on her. They then uh, turned, went outside. The report also finds that Mika Faitari then raised her voice uh, and the employee uh, felt scared and uh, was concerned for her safety when uh, Mika Faitari did that. So those two facts, uh, in the report are no longer, uh, dis well, they are disputed by Mika Faitari, but the reporters found them to be the most probable uh, outcome. Of course, Mika Faitari uh, has disputed that, and she actually alleges her version of the events is that uh, when they came out of the foyer, instead of coming up behind, they met each other face to face, and when that happened, they uh, had some words. Then they both turned and went outside, and Mika Faitari alleges she never touch to it at all whatsoever. She alleges the bruises must have come from somewhere else. So that's where we stand. Uh, and Mika Faitari has actually released a, uh, a statement this afternoon uh, saying that she says she accepts while the Prime Minister's decision to stand her down from her ministerial portfolios on the back of the report uh, still stands. She is working hard to regain her confidence. She contests some of the allegations. She's dis disappointed in th uh, the behaviour that from her that led to this complaint and is committed to her own development, including better managing employment relationships. So she's getting that help. Okay, now Gia, the uh, information that was, that was published today, uh, it includes a letter from Ms Faitari's lawyer um, now, a lot of that is, is redacted and we can't see, but it does have serious concerns. Are we any the wiser as to what those serious concerns are? Yes, you're right. It is heavily redacted, this letter from Simpson Grierson, who is uh, the representative for Mecca today. Now, we're not sure exactly why she's lawyered up so heavily. Uh, maybe she was, it was suggested that she did so. Uh, but this letter uh, raises what they say are serious concerns in relation to the draft version of the report that they were sent. So this is a letter sent following uh, uh, the draft version that they were sent and their reading of that. Now they say uh, they're worried about matters raised in the report and conclusions reached that they call not sound or sustainable, including, its first of all, its reliance on the complaint laid by email, which was not actually laid by the employee herself, but rather somebody known to a friend of the employee, which uh, is alleged to have come from a conversation that that employee had with her friend. So it's a second-hand complaint. Now, that uh, email uh, used very strong language to describe the alleged events and, the lawyers say, includes an explicit threat. Now, we're not quite sure what that threat um, alludes to. Uh, it also has been referred to as blackmail, so we are not sure. Uh, that's all redacted in the lawyer's uh, letter. And it, so the, uh, the letter goes on to say that they are concerned that uh, all of these things have not been explored sufficiently in the investigation and that it is relevant to both the significance and the allegations and the credibility of the employee's testimony. So that uh, letter uh, disputes a number of uh, factors in the report and um, we're not quite sure what the outcome was or what any, whether any changes were made to the final report given that. But Given everything that was leaked to the Herald, which was apparently that draft report, it doesn't look like there's all that much different uh, in what we've seen today. OK, now overall it's not a good look for Mecca Faitari. She of course has been sacked by the Prime Minister. She no longer has those ministries. Uh, where to from here? I mean, are we expecting anything more from the Prime Minister? Yeah, so the Prime Minister saw that uh, final report before it had the redactions out of it and, as you say, she's chosen to sack uh, Mika Faitari from her ministerial responsibilities. Now, she stays on, of course, as the MP for Akaroa Rafati and uh, also as the co-chair of the Labour Māori Caucus. Now, 
On top of that, uh, Mecca fight, uh, there is an investigation into the uh, leak of the Mecca Whaiteri report to the Herald. Now that happened last week. The details came out around the bruising and around um, the, the raising of the voice outside uh, the event in Gisborne. And those details, uh, the Department of Internal Affairs is looking into how those details were leaked to the Herald. So this will be an internal investigation because of course DIA uh, commissioned the report initially and now they're looking internally to see where that leak could have come from. So that's another leak investigation that's going on at Parliament at the moment. Our political reporter Gia Garrick, now we have requested an interview with Mecca Faitari, we have not heard back. We also have been turned down by Willie Jackson, the co-chair of uh, Labor's Maori Caucus. Um, and so uh, we've also put a request in uh, this afternoon to see whether the Prime Minister has anything to say. We will let you know if we do hear anything more before the uh, close of the programme.